Rat Riders, it is such a pleasure to see everyone's bright and shining faces this morning. Such a tremendous group of people, am I right? People who are willing and ready to shake the floor they walk on, attempting to make a change in the world, one grant at a time. If we have never met, and I hope we get to touch base one day, my name is Casey Padragon, and I am the Development Coordinator here at Paso Norte Community Foundation. Here at PDNCF, I focus on assisting with strategic planning and fundraising support for the organizations under our umbrella and also execute our community-wide events. One major event, which is my favorite project, is El Paso Giving Day, an online charitable giving campaign designed to shine a light, shine a light on the essential work of nonprofit organizations and ignite the spirit of giving in our community. If you do have any questions whatsoever about El Paso Giving Day and how your nonprofit organization may register, please feel free to contact me. Grant may, writing may be daunting and a downright tedious task, but extremely, extremely instrumental in growing the development of any organization. From the nonprofit conference and leading up to Giving Day, I speak with many nonprofit professionals daily, those from grassroots organizations to those who are highly experienced fundraisers. But in all of these conversations, I do note and definitely can relate to the common frustrations and stress that is related to grant writing. Here at PDNCF, we heard you and felt it was absolutely necessary to hold a grant writing workshop series open to the public. Christian Hernandez Ortega, our experienced grant writer and expert speaker today, has helped local nonprofit organizations and one of our cherished agency funds, Moms on Board, receive over 345,000 in funding. Christian does have a bachelor's in health promotion and a master's in public health, and outside of Moms on Board, an extensive grant writing career. If you have any questions or comments throughout today's session, please write them in the chat. Please keep your sound on mute as to not dis disrupt the presentation. The session will be recorded and the link to review will be sent to all registered email addresses by end of day today, along with any important follow-up documents. Christian, take it away. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, everybody, for um, joining. Let me go ahead and get my screen up. So I'm really excited to be here and have been, have been asked by the Paso Norte Community Foundation to share some of my grant writing insights and that I've learned over the years. I've had the great opportunity to uh, assist one of the agency funds under the foundation, Moms on Board of El Paso, with grant writing for their signature Escarate All Abilities Playground Project. So that's been great experience and great lessons learned. So today we're just gonna be going over the basics uh, to get your grassroots organization started. So let's begin. To keep this lighthearted, um, we want to know, you know, you know, to keep it lighthearted and what you need to know, really what that's what it is, is grant write, grants are valuable resources to help organizations like yourself uh, in accomplishing goals. They could be tools for your organization in seeking to provide a service, programming, to, you know, add to infrastructure, built environment, or add anything else in helping those that you serve or the public, general public. They can be from all levels of government. They can be at the local level, you can see them at the state level and the federal level. Those are called requests for proposals, or they're gonna, you can see you know, corporate foundations and private foundations. And throughout this particular series, we're gonna be more focused on applying to those corporate and private foundations. And before we begin, I want to see, you know, we want to see who's in the Zoom room. So let us uh, know your grant level, your level of grant writing experience in the chat box, and you'll see that we provided some options like A, B, or C. A is, is newbie ready to learn, B is grant writing for a few years, and C is you can help me write a book on grant writing. That's something that I'm, we're not going to be doing, but just as an example that really the, that you have extensive experience in grant writing. And so this is just one of those tools you want to hear from you. And uh, I want to hear your experience. Okay, so uh, Casey is going to be going through the, the chat box and kind of see who's in the room today. So Casey, let yeah. me know. It looks like it's a tie between A and B. Um, I have a lot of people, you know, not great, A, B, a lot of A's actually, a lot of newbies, which is exciting. Great. I would, I would probably classify myself as a newbie as well. 
And that's really who you know we're trying to target uh, for this particular um, for this particular session. Those newbies that want to get their feet wet in grant writing don't know where to start, right? So you know we have a range of experience, you know those in the room today. So feel free to continue to use that chat box for questions and sharing your ideas and any type of lessons learned. Um, and Casey will be monitoring it as we go. Okay. So where to start? Okay, the first steps, this is probably a given, but the first step is to decide on your project idea, mission, purpose, aims, issuary, because that is going to help you um, really narrow down the search for what you're looking for and something that fits your, you know, what you're looking for. And I'm sure that narrowing down the idea and establishing a mission and vision can be a whole nother session. <laughs> Right, Casey? And so, so to keep it simple, it's just helpful to have this stuff before you begin because it's really gonna help you. And next, you're gonna wanna see, you know, wanna see who's on your team now or building a team. Then, at, or at the same time, you can assess your, assess your team's talents as, you know, you start building and determining, you know, what kind of skill set are we gonna need, um, you know, in our team? to help us be successful in, in grant writing and, 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 win, and writing winning grants, but as, as well as bringing some, some funding in for the programs and projects that we do. Other steps uh, to beginning your grant is, you know, beginning your grant search and narrowing down your grant search. Building a grant packet of common sections found in a grant proposal, because in the end, that's gonna save you time. And well, that's what we're gonna be going over today. A little bit just a little bit that's more of a sneak peek for what's to come so this is for all the small and mighty teams who where everybody's a volunteer okay i hear you i've joined one of those teams and so you have overcome the greatest challenge in establishing your organization or your fund okay so give yourself a pat on the back now let's see how you can maximize the talents of your volunteers or find volunteers to help fill a role while leveraging those resources that you have access to. And that's for some, but then there's some broader resources in our communities that we just don't know that they're there, right? So as I mentioned before, this is gonna be going on maybe around the same time as you're building your team or um, you know, while you're building your team. Since you already have an idea of who's on your team now, and who would be a great person to complement your team based on their talents and their skill sets. Okay, so for grant writing in the nonprofit grassroots environment, I'd say that this team can consist of about two to three people. And ideally, you'd want an opener, a reviewer, and a closer. And your opener and reviewer may also be that same person. Uh, and then on the slide, you'll see kind of those characteristics of what do you want to see in, in terms of an opener? So your opener is that person or persons that are really good at networking with other organizations, agencies, and finding leads. Pretty much the person that has that initial pitch discussion and knows your organization's story and project because they're going to really help sell your organization and your project. And then you're going to have a reviewer. And that person's going to be, you know, that has the talent for reviewing and cutting down drafts. I know my strengths, <laughs> okay? And this might not be the one for me, but there are people who are really great at cleaning and cutting drafts to make them sparkle. And that's the person that you want for, that, for your team, okay? And lastly, you have your closer. This is a person on your team that's tasked with writing and they're good at tracking what other documents you need for a submission. So your first pro tip is gonna be assigning one person to be the writer and making sure that you have all the necessary documents, okay? And then I would recommend that if you're bringing in a grant writer and providing that particular service, that you kind of do all these initial steps first before bringing, you know, before bringing them in because we really wanna help make our dollars stretch, right? And using our stuff efficiently and effectively. So when forming your team, think about those who are already in your circle of volunteers or those already working with you. 
do they have that expertise or grant writing training that they can be just tapped on the shoulder for? You may also look for someone who's great with details and checklists. Do you know somebody who's good at reviewing or who's that social butterfly? Your other pro tip of the day, there might be college instructors or university professors in our region in El Paso or Southern New Mexico where your organization can pair up and with, or they can also identify a student that might be looking to garner more grant writing experience. And, and that is just kind of helping foster those emerging professionals because one day they'll be in the field just like us, right? And sometimes those courses can adopt an agency or organization within the semester and you might be able to get a grant packet built out um, and have something ready for you. Okay, so in the field in which I work on predominant, working predominantly is public health. And we carry the same mindset as community development, you know, of how can we leverage and maximize our resources we already have to do great things together. Now, let's begin your grant search. You've already decided on your project, issue, mission, vision, purpose, aims, and so create a process for tracking your leads and then cast the wide net. So the process is the key. Uh, I'd say the, the biggest key is really just creating a process. So everybody knows on your team what's going on, okay? And there are database, in terms of casting a wide net, there are databases or clearing houses that you can purchase a subscription for, but you also might be able to find places with databases that can be used to search for opportunities, okay? In the different communities in our region, that can look like maybe a public library or universities, chamber of Com commerce, or good old Google, okay? <laughs> not, not striking that out first, okay? So when you cast a white net, you're really just looking, in, looking for those foundations that meet a wide criteria. So those that really align with your issue area and serve Texas or New Mexico or wherever that might be. And then you might, and then afterwards you start to kind of build a list that you can go back and then come over. So remember as you uh, cast that white net, you also have an opener that is at the same time actively collecting those leads um, with their networking skills. So those leads jointly end up on this particular tool that we're gonna share with you in just a bit. Okay, and that's gonna be added to the list. So if there are any particular leads that that opener um, says like, I think we really have a good shot, that gets added to your list, okay? Sometimes those working on your issue areas, um, like other organizations and agencies might also know of potential funders as well, or different opportunities. So they might also be, you know, even be those that you're working very closely with on this particular project or program. The pro tip, is to save your terms, okay? This can be a Google document that everybody on the team has access to, and so they just kind of drop them in. This saves you time, and if you were to hire somebody out as well, they've know, they know, you know what you've already used, so they might not necessarily have to use it, or they can have different angles in terms of how they can kind of figure out how to kind of search for more opportunities. And finally, you're gonna narrow down those leads. So the person narrowing down the leads, I would suggest would be the closer. So now we're gonna be going over tools to assist your grant search. And those of you participating in today's session will be sent the two main tools to get your grant search started. So the first one is gonna help you create a process for tracking your leads. And you can also do this on, you know, by yourself as well. Um, and then, um, and you can do it in Excel or in Google Sheets. The suggestion would be to add it to a share drive or like, like a OneDrive or a Google Drive um, so that others on the team have access to it. And, you know, just, just depending on your privacy in terms of wh wherever you're working in your organization, okay? And so the columns that you would include are things like the name of the foundation, the link to the website if it has one, contact information, um, sometimes, you know, some of the foundations, depending on which database you use, it might be an uh, actual cold call. And so just to let you all know. <laughs> so deadlines, um, you know, other important information, eligibility, 
and um, your av the average award your ask and tracking and submittal notes. Okay, so you'd be using for your initially probably these these first three columns and then maybe this column down here. So the pro tip is to color code your grant leads. And so this is a living document. You want to treat it like that. And everybody, so everybody knows at what stage of the application is at, for example. So everybody knows where you're at. And this will also help you as you narrow down those leads and you start to search for the ones that really fit your purpose and your vision, as well as those that you're going to have the high likelihood of getting. So while you're casting your white net, you know, like I mentioned to you, you just, you know, you're not going to be using all, all the columns. You're just going to be using the foundation name, website, and maybe even contact information. So this is really just your initial casting the white net is really just, you know, the first initial first scan to see what's available that meets your search criteria. And then when you're narrowing down your search, this is where you're going to start filling in the other columns. So let's go to narrowing down your leads. So the other tool that you're going to be provided with to help assist you in starting out, um, you're going to be receiving it as a Word document, but we're going to take a look at, at it as a group in the meantime. So more carefully, um, it's going to be helping you review um, your potential leads website. Okay, let's take a look. So this is what it looks like. And I provided some helpful questions that um, to, to ask yourself while looking through the website. These are just the basic areas on a foundation's website that sometimes are on there and sometimes aren't labeled that way and sometimes aren't on there. But if a section's not there, go on to the next section and then go on to the next section and don't get too caught up that this is like, I need this information. It's not like the need of the information. It's just trying to kind of see whether or not that information's there and helps you answer that particular question. Okay. And so this is going to just help get that information that you need to help you make a, a real good um, estimation as a team who you're going to be applying to. And so, you know, on our first, we're going to have a first example to kind of look at what that looks like. Um, but I just want you to be aware of like, you know, these are questions like, do, do you fund 501c3s? This is just an example. So if you're a different organization type, you would kind of enter in whatever that would look like. And then you're, you can see that, that if not, you move on. So let me go ahead and let's start on looking at our first example. Okay, so when looking at this particular website, so this is just for educational purposes only, okay? Um, but first we wanna know, for example, is my organization eligible to apply? Online it says that we fund, right here you can see we fund nonprofits. I know that my, my uh, organization's a 501c3, so it looks like I can continue to move forward. The next area that I see on the website is they serve North Texas. This doesn't look too promising, you know, but you can look to see if like within the past two years on the other tabs, you know, if they funded a project in this area. But if you don't really find anything, um, I'd say it's a no, you know, go on to the next lead on your grant list, you know, on your leads list, be sure to cross out, track the color, write a note that it's out of your service area, whatever the case might be as to why this didn't necessarily meet what you were looking for. Okay, so here's a nonprofit organization and here is North Texas. Okay, so we're going to hop back to our grant lead website. So you'll see that that kind of takes you through section one, section one in terms of, oops, sorry everybody, but this is going to see, you know, section one, the service area. Let me zoom in a little bit so everybody can see. You're going to see your, your service area. Do they have a history of you know, funding in our state or our region? Do they have a history of you know, funding in our county? Look at their particular priority areas, their focus areas. You know, have they funded a project like yours before? That's also, if they haven't funded a pro project like yours before and don't have a history of funding in our area, that's, you know, you go on to the next lead, okay? 
So this is going to help you just help you narrow down that list that you're going to build and you're going to think that it's like too much, but don't worry, you can get through it. Okay. And so this is just another thing is that in some, in some instances, I made a note that some foundations you might need to look and at, into their uh, annual reports to kind of see what they funded before in, in terms of their past projects. And sometimes they give you a really cool graph uh, where you can see um, you know, where they've awarded to and the focus areas. And so that's another example that I wanted to share with you. So, so you can see, um, this is also for educational purposes only, but this particular website, you can see the grant distribution and you can see since its inception and when, so when they first started and you know, started their foundation and then what they gifted in 2019. So we can see the, the different categories in terms of the focus areas that they've awarded to in the past. So this is also one of those things that might help you make a determination to see whether or not your grant might get, you know, whether or not your opportunity might be something. So you can see all these different areas and then see how it's been, you know, so maybe if I see that my project aligns with health and science and social services, that, that might be a potential and also maybe if it aligns with environment youth development that might be a potential because that might be projects that they're looking for that their board is looking for to find okay so let's hop back to our reviewing our grant websites so making our way down the page if you get towards the end of the page then it's looking like a really good prospect and you want the, and then that's when you start kind of copying and pasting some of the mission and vision language in their focus area. And you can see that, you know, six is just really just kind of creating that, that alignment because um, we want to integrate the language as a grant writer, you want to integrate the language of your mission and vision and their mission and vision and kind of marry the two to really help you and increase your chances. Um, because it really looks like this is that, that attention to detail that they really look for. Then you're going to see that there's some particular deadlines, you know, or if a lead or if a potential lead uses an online system or, you know, other guidelines. So this is stuff that you can put in a separate document or on your tracking document. And so the one thing that I didn't list that I wanted to kind of mention to the group is that if you're still unsure about where you sit, you could contact the funder directly at the contact they would provide online or at the one that's provided, but just be prepared first if you venture into cold calling. We want you to be prepared because being prepared is really gonna help you in terms of communicate what you're wanting and, and framing it in a way that is very, you know, look, something that they might be interested in. So it takes a little time to get to know where to find things and where to look on websites. But in the, at the end of the day, you're gonna really get the hang of it. And because you're doing it so often. Okay, so let's jump back to our presentation. And at, this is what your track, your grant tracker or leads tracker is gonna start to look like once it starts getting filled in and starts getting colored up, if you choose to kind of do, the, do it this way. Um, you're gonna see here that you know, we found out that when we were kind of narrowing down the scope that this, this John Doe Foundation did not meet the needs that we were really hoping for and it, because it doesn't cover our service area. So we're gonna strike that out and we're gonna color it up in red. And so everybody on the team knows that that's the one that we're not pursuing anymore. And then you can see here you can, that we've colored it up in progress. So that's maybe the one that the team that's already decided, hey, this is one that we want to pursue. And so everybody knows that this is in progress and then any kind of other detailed notes are here. Okay. So just to kind of let you all know what that would look like in the end. And you're going to receive this tool and the other two tool just to um, restate that. So um, one last takeaway for today that we are going to be getting into detail over the next two sessions will be We'll be building your grant packet. So as you go through the basic steps, 
this is what like what I've done in my practice and others may do and you can kind of put that in the chat if you do it as well is to prepare a grant proposal packet while you're looking around why right why <laughs> uh, because you will need the information anyway plus it's a great start for some language and then it can bring in somebody like if somebody comes in if you decide to hire somebody for services it might also save you some time because it's already put together and they might be able just to kind of look at, at the bits and pieces and the holes and fill in the holes, okay? These are common sections of, and information to look for, but it's not an exhaustive list, um, but could be just stuff to prepare for. Ideally, you would pick and pull from the sample packet if you are submitting a letter of intent, like an LOI, or to an online system that has very specific, you know, words that you can't go over. And then you just adapt as you go, because like I remember what we mentioned, it's integrating language, their language with your language and just weaving it. I've suggested some pages as well, but then the, there's other sections like the project plan where the setting is probably gonna be within the project plan, for example, but just the kind of stuff that you have to prepare for. Um, and you know sometimes it's just easier to have more than less but that's kind of how i how i roll so remember the more you you know the more you do the more experience you'll get and you'll soon be teaching others your tips and tricks for grant writing and then you know in closing we want to hear it from you again uh, let us know how do you feel going back to your orgs or team and explain the grant you know the basics of grant writing. Once again, you can use those chat boxes to kind of look at the selections. You know, A, I'm ready to share about the basics with my team. B, I'm ready to implement the basic steps in my org. Or C, I look forward to adding these tools to my toolbox. So um, Casey, if you can let me know what those answers look like coming in, that'd be perfect. Yes, and they're rolling in. Somebody put A, B, and C. All right. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we have um we have actually oh gosh we have a lot of a b and c's um everyone's looking forward to adding in the tools to their toolbox as well as a lot of um b c so they're ready to implement the grant basics in their organization um it looks like but ah quite a bit are also looking to share so awesome it's, um, well that's great i mean yeah, that's great. We want, you know, you, we want these to be usable tools and practical tools and, and to help you create a process to help you create, integrate this particular, you know, process into what you're doing. So it's really great. I'm glad that that was, that, that those were the, there were some responses. So I think now we're going to be moving into more Q&A. And so Casey, if you want to, I can probably yeah. stop sharing or okay um loretta has a quick question as a rule of thumb page wise are grants written in double space or single how would you like to answer that i uh, say sorry can you mention that um again yes of course ha as a rule of thumb page wise are grants written in double space or single so i'm assuming when you're presenting a proposal grant to um, someone in microsoft word Yes, so what you wanna do is follow the guidelines. So you will, um, I would hate for everybody to kind of go through like, oh, well it was double spacer, but each foundation is different. Uh, so sometimes the actual proposal that you're gonna be submitting is gonna be through an online system. So, you know, single space or double space isn't gonna necessarily be the key. There are gonna be some tricks that I'm gonna be sharing in the next session of okay, we're doing an online system. How do I make stuff stand out in an online system? But um, so the, I guess the short answer is really look at the guidelines that the foundation um, provides you. I would just do these things that like maybe a, like a, a single or double space, it doesn't really matter in terms of when you're building the grant packet. Great. Um, so, Eddie, this presentation will be available later. Um, we, I will be following up in an email with the PowerPoint, the recording of this session, as well as the documents that Kristen did mention. Um, Omar, Chris, Omar would like to know, Christian, are you currently available for grant writing consulting? 
Um, that's a great, <laughs> that's a great question. I think um, right now it just, it just depends on timing. Um, but if you shoot me an email, my contact information is going to be on the, on the website. And it just, I guess it really just depends on your project and whether or not it would be, we'd be the right fit. Right. Yes, definitely. So thank you for asking that Omar. <laughs> Um, so we have another question. Do grant funds want you to be a 501c3? It really just depends which particular grant type you are applying to. Um, something that's attractive that I've been kind of seeing lately is if you have a partnership. So if you're partnering with another organization to implement a program or a project, um, and those key particular partnerships, like for example, if you're going to be doing something with the city, it, it just really just depends. But for me, I think a lot of the buzz is probably um, how you're collectively bringing together folks and stakeholders uh, is probably the answer to my question. Great. So we have a couple questions about just finding grants. So um, we have a question. I'm going to kind of conjoin all three of these questions because they are similar. Um, Samuel's asking, he's a, he's a school administrator. Where would he be able to find a list of available grants to apply? He did apologize. He was late for the training. But following into Lorena's question, which when searching for grants, you mentioned these data that these databases that can be purchased. Are these exact? Are these ex are there examples of these? And how much do they usually run for? So yeah. So for example, I have a subscription to one that is like it can run up to 200 for an annual fee. Um, but you might kind of ask around in your particular field. So I would say, you know, if for the school, um, I would say that there might be organizations or agencies that you can turn to that can help you know where to find those particular grants. I know, for example, I know the El Paso Community Foundation had a classroom grant that was open. You know, I do some consulting for another organization that also has different grants open. So I think if there is, um, maybe there's a particular uh, professional association that you're a part of, um, that you can kind of ask those questions and maybe see particularly where, where you can find, find those grant databases that work for those in your field, I'd say. Thank you, Christian. And then, uh, um, Soledad has a question. If a grant question says to limit response to 20 lines, is it necessary to use all 20 lines? What are your thoughts? It isn't. If you're communicating something to be like super succinct, then, you know, it isn't. But I would just caution you that if it is very, if you're not necessarily using the number of lines available, that you make sure you do your checks that it has all the information that you need. And that's kind of looking at the question. What is the question that you're applying? Like, what is, what is it particularly asking? Make sure all, everything that is in your response is there from the question. Does that make sense? <laughs> Great. And I don't know if you're going to go into this in our next two sessions, but for the budget aspect, Barbara wants to know if a 501c3 is just starting, how do we implement the cost of what's needed for a project of interest? I feel like that's a huge question to ask. <laughs> that's a very huge question. And I know that I won't necessarily, I'll, I'll be breezing by probably, we're not going to go too into detail into budgets or, or budget narrative because it really just depends on you know, your organization. And there are grants out there um, that do kind of are more capacity building or like seed money grants. And, and so there's just different types of grants that are out there. Um, and so I think it's kind of going back to the drawing board and kind of seeing like personnel wise, and then looking at your potential grant and seeing what percent time would that grant be if you are including personnel into that particular budget. Um, great. No, great response. Um, one last question. What type of databases would you suggest? So that was one thing that I can kind of follow up with the group on and, and, and send it to Casey. Maybe that can be sent out to the attendees. 
but um, I know that there's, um, you know, there's guide star, you know, some of these foundations, like, you know, the community foundation probably uses guide star as a database to look through the potential, um, potential, I guess, funding opportunity or leads that, that or foundations that provide funding for specific focus areas. Um, but maybe if you drop in also to your public library um, and maybe ask, I'll go ahead and send you the one that they, they typically use and you might be, might be available to access um, like at a public library. Um, but I don't have the, the name off the top of my head. So I'll try. Oh, great. Um, just to kind of for our um, any attendance from our agency funds, um, please contact Andrea Macias, our development assistant, so that you guys can um, set up an appointment for a consultation to go ahead and look into foundation search as that is one of the um, kind of assistance that we provide our agency funds. Uh, Foundation Search is um, a database which provides um, organizations the opportunity to review um, grant funding opportunities. Um, and, and I mean, maybe those, I was, sorry, I was going to mention, you know, maybe those of you out there also have recommendations for your peers that are on today as far as those. So I would drop that in the, the, the chat box as well. I mean, those of you that, you know, have that different experience, you know, I know there's a wealth of experience here. So nonprofits, if you, there's one that you use in terms of a database that is paid, uh, I would say like, you know, if you want to share right now, that's, that'd be a great time. Great. And I'm just going to answer this um, for you, Kathy. Your nonprofit, Fab Lab El Paso, is currently looking to hire a funding specialist grant writer. Um, she is asking, is there a place where you can post this job opportunity? Most definitely. You can send this information to myself, and I will send it to our um, contact database. Um, but great. I have um, one last question. I'm so, so sorry. I know I said one last, but this is a really good question. This is from Carlos Corrala, El Paso Film Festival. Um, he's, he's mentioning organizations such as National Endowment for the Arts require full 501c3 status. What advice can you offer to fiscally sponsored organizations similar to uh, Moms on Board with PDNCF that do not have the status in applying for grants? That is, um, that is, you know, very particularly tricky, <laughs> I'd say, but um, it, in my experience, it has been where you could be, it could be listed as, you know, you know, the, the particular agency and then in your description that you do pro the, you know, possibly like the community foundation is, you know, an agency fund under the umbrella of you know, and, and so like when you're submitting a grant, you would probably submit it and as you as you as the agency. Um, but you know, keep in mind you also have to integrate language that says that you are an agency fund under you know that particular agency. So I think it just depends on how um, how you want to navigate those particular waters um, because sometimes you know because you are an agency fund, it's still 501c3. So I think it, it kind of does get tricky. And I think the, those are probably details that we won't, <laughs> I won't necessarily get too tied down into, but I think it just depends on um, what particular opportunity that you're applying to. And um, you're gonna be leading with your information of your organization rather than um, the information of, their, of the, the other foundations where, which you're um, associated with. You might be, the information that you might be using is uh, fiscally um, the the information from you know the community the Boston Arctic Community Foundation for example or whatever one that you're tied to in terms of if that makes sense hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Yes, definitely. Or just contacting the um, kind of that department that's associated with that grant, just asking them the questions of kind of explaining the partnership between Boston North, the Community Foundation and your organization, and then just providing being prepared with the like the gift instrument, the um, written um, document that states what this partnership is about and what it constitutes. Um, no, great question. So if we did not get to your question, no worries. We will follow up within the next week. Thank you, Christian. This was absolutely tremendous. 
If you or your organization is looking for more capacity building workshops, you came to the right place. Visit our website at, at pdnfoundation.org to purchase on-demand access to our nonprofit conference recordings. Since you all attended today, we are offering our grant writers a 30% off discount to purchase access. The nonprofit conference Reimagine was designed for nonprofit executive leadership, staff, and board members to come together to think, develop, and grow. Panelists and speakers include locally and nationally respected authors, thinkers, philanthropists, and corporate leaders to divulge, uh, which divulge on the topics of storytelling, making the most of disruption, funding your mission, managing risk, and corporate partnerships. If you are interested in taking advantage of this exclusive discount, please email me at cpedregon at pdnfoundation.org so I can go ahead and register you. But if you are looking for more training outside of the conference, participating in El Paso Giving Day is the perfect opportunity for your organization to receive social media, uh, donor retention, communications, and board member training. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Ah! Actually, I'm not going to. Visit ElPasoGivingDay.org to learn more about more information. Registration kickoff for El Paso Giving Day does begin July 1st, and our first workshop on donor retention begins on July 22nd. Again, if you have any questions about Giving Day and the benefits from participating, please feel free to call or email me or visit ElPasoGivingDay.org. Again, please feel free to check out our website at pdnfoundation.org and stay up to date with all things Basel Norte Community Foundation and events occurring within our Basel Norte region. If you get a chance, take a look at the many organizations under our umbrella and find an, an organization with a mission you are passionate about. We would greatly appreciate any donations to our funds to further support their programming as well as or to our general operations so that we may continue to provide excellent capacity building workshops to you all. Again, just a reminder, all registered email addresses will be receiving today's session along with the materials that Christian did discuss. I will see you all next week for our second session of Paso Norte Community Foundation's Grant Writing for Grassroots Workshops. See you all then. Thank you and have a fabulous Wednesday. Thank you. And I also provided my contact information in the chat in case there's any other questions that we couldn't necessarily get into. Thank you all.